Hey everyone, so towards the beginning of the week I saw Ambinic release an update to the Android OS that comes packaged with the RG353P. It's an interesting update, that's the biggest change is the addition of an emulation front end. So I thought I'd try it out and document it as I go so it can act as a bit of a tutorial for those who like to try it themselves. So first of all, just a few things to make sure you've gotten ahead of time. You'll need a fully charged RG353P. The upgrade process does take time. It's between 20 minutes and half an hour end to end. So to reduce the risk of anything like bricking, I'd highly recommend you just make sure you've got a fully charged handheld before you do anything. You'll need a micro SD card to flash the upgrade to. I use a 32 gig, but a 16 gig would be more than fine. Again, just to reduce the risk of anything going wrong, I'd highly recommend using a main brand micro SD uh, here. You also need a micro SD to USB stick. If your laptop does have a built-in micro SD card reader, it will likely not be picked up by the flashing software as it's specifically looking for a storage plugged in via USB. You'll need a Windows PC with admin permissions. At the moment of flashing, uh, the software provided by Avenic is only Windows only. So I'm not sure if there's any uh, equivalents out there. And finally, the actual required software. I'll include the link to Ambinix G Drive sourcing the files in the video description. So now that's out of the way, I've downloaded everything from Ambinix G Drive link and have everything ready to go. To make things easier to see what's going on, the first thing I recommend doing is opening the file config.ini and changing the language selected line from its default one to two. Once you've saved it and booted up the SD firmware tool, the tool will then be in English, so it's a lot easier to work with. Okay, so once the SD firmware tool is open, you'll want to make sure that your micro SD card is selected in the choose removable disk dropdown. Mine was set by default, but certainly worth uh, checking uh, before proceeding. You'll then want to make sure the upgrade firmware tick box is ticked and the PCBA test and SD boot options remain unticked. Then you'll want to select the firmware image downloaded from Ambinix link using the firmware button. And once you've taken a minute just to double and triple check everything's set up and good to go, you're ready to click on the create button. This will take a few minutes to write to your micro SD card and we'll skip through a few statuses at the bottom of the tool before finishing up with a pop-up prompt saying everything is written successfully. At this point, you're good to press OK and then eject your micro SD card safely from your computer as you would do normally. So now I'm switching back to my fully charged RG353P. What you want to make sure you do here is remove both micro SD cards from the handheld and then insert the micro SD card we flashed the new firmware to in the first micro SD card slot while keeping the second micro SD card slot of the handheld completely empty. Before you start the flashing process, the position of the reset button on the RG353P always throws me off, so it's probably just a ridiculous overkill here, but just make sure to reduce the risk as much as possible. Um, I'd highly recommend you make sure you've got a place to rest the handheld once it's flashing, which won't accidentally press any of the buttons. And if you're not played on your RG353P recently, just to spend a little time getting re-familiar to where all the buttons are. Once you've done so, you simply have to just turn the R353P on and it'll start the flashing process immediately, automatically. This process will take a good 15 minutes at least, so I've recorded all the footage here, but we'll fast forward through it as quickly as possible for you. Okay, so the flashing process has finally finished. 
And all we need to do now is remove the micro SD card and it automatically reboot into Android once you do. The first reboot will take a little longer than normal, so don't be put off by the increased boot time first time around. Once we've booted into Android, things will initially look familiar, but once you scroll down from the top, you'll immediately notice a few differences. I'm going to press the R icon to boot into the emulation front end, which is the main centerpiece of this firmware upgrade. Now again, the first initial load will take a lot longer than normal here, as it's doing a lot of the setup in the background. One of these background tasks is setting off RetroArch to download various cores, import setup, and start scraping your ROM directories. So you can make the initial setup finish a lot quicker by not inserting your second micro SD card yet and scraping your games afterwards. Or you can make the initial setup take longer by inserting your second micro SD card before clicking the R icon for the first time. Either way, you'll need to scrape your game directories, so the choice is up to you. The version of RetroArch that the front end uses for its emulation is RetroArch Arc 64, so you can jump into the app separately to make any required changes. One of the first you'll likely want to do is set the input for the menu navigation, as it seems to be set by set to touch by default, and then you can make any further tweaks to the RetroArch side as normal. To return back to the front end though, you just have to press the function button. And there we go, firmware upgrade and initial setup of the front end complete. I find it really positive to see some official development support going into the RG353P, as it's likely been my favourite Ambinic handheld of this year, and the custom firmware love it's been getting from the community meant that the device is seeing development support regardless of Ambinic. So it's great to see some official time and effort being put in, and not just a blind reliance on this fantastic community. I'll be very interested to also see if this front end is brought forward into future Ambinic Android releases, as my limited time with it so far has actually been quite positive too. Anyway, I hope this has proven useful, and please do let me know what you think. That's it for now though, so thanks so much for watching.